Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I thought we'd dive into something special. If you've been following the channel for a while, you've probably heard me refer to the Spinosaurus that we all got to see in Jurassic Park 3 as a hybrid dinosaur. If you're unaware of the more recent discoveries that have been found throughout the Mizrani Global website or the Dinosaur Protection Group, you could very well be left in the dark on this whole conversation and may just think it's some wild fan theory that I and others have spread. Well today, we're going to discuss this topic in full and examine all of the available evidence that's been found to to find out whether the Spinosaurus from the Jurassic Park movies really is a hybridized creature. Jurassic Park 3's importance in canon has been given a major facelift as of late, so this should be very interesting. Jurassic Park 3 was released in July of 2001. This third entry in the series became the infamous introduction to the Spinosaurus for many in the general public. This animal was brought into the series to essentially one-up the franchise mascot, T-Rex. In a short battle between this new dinosaur and the veteran Tyrannosaur, the Spinosaurus was able to kill the Rex and symbolically roar in a triumphant manner over its kill. After this event takes place, paleontologists Alan Grant and Billy Brennan have a brief discussion over what animal it could possibly be, with Billy suggesting that it was either a Baryonyx or Suchomimus due to both animals being a part of InGen's public list of cloned dinosaurs. But Grant assures him that this creature is in fact a Spinosaurus. Due to Alan's knowledge of the animal not being on InGen's list, the doctor grew very suspicious of Site B during his stay and wondered what other odd things the company had been up to. If we jump ahead a few years in time, we'll come to the release of Jurassic World in 2015. This film introduced the formidable Indominus Rex, a genetically engineered hybrid that contained the base genome of a T-Rex and an assortment of other living and extinct animals. During the hype and build-up for the fourth film, Colin Trevorrow and Universal put together a team of Jurassic Park experts to help write the backstory for the new films and expand upon the admittedly very loose and unreliable canon that had been left in broken pieces after the release of the third movie. You see, the Jurassic Park series had a major lull after the third entry was released, and no new information was given about any concrete explanations, lingering questions, or even minor details into why various things in the franchise made little sense when actually thought about. The Spinosaurus' very existence happened to be a very jarring revelation that was just kind of left unattended. To put this controversy into perspective, many found it really unlikely that a genetics company who cloned dinosaurs for profit would make a bigger and badder dinosaur to that of their park mascot, only to hide and obscure its existence from anything with their name on it. What exactly were they hiding? It's a bigger and supposedly more impressive dinosaur to that of Jurassic Park's Tyrannosaurus. So why wasn't it on their logo and why didn't anyone talk about it? None of this would ever be addressed in any form of media until the Mizrani backdoor site was discovered by fans quite recently. If one goes to the Jurassic World website and clicks on the Mizrani backdoor link, you'll be greeted to this screen. They're going to ask you for a password. It took me a while to figure this out back in the day, but to say Save you all time, just type in Indominus. Next, type in the command archive and hit enter. Then type in 02202003. If you do all of this correctly, you should reach the hidden message that started us down this rabbit hole. Its contents reveal that Dr. Henry Wu was hard at work trying to replicate feathers in Jurassic Park's dinosaurs. We're unsure as to why exactly the geneticist was having issues replicating them, but apparently he created something he didn't intend to during his work on gene splicing. This failed experiment was labeled an accident and was left abandoned on Isla Sorn. Jump ahead three years and you'll find new information on the subject through the DPG. This website uncovers the terrible truth of the Spinosaurus past as well as the creation of other animals that were cloned on the island. We now know that Spinosaurus was not on Engine's list because it was cloned after the company went public in 1997. After the Tyrannosaurus rampage in San Diego took place, everyone knew that dinosaurs were still alive in the real world, which forced the company to hand over data on their previously confidential work. However, after John Hammond died, Engine would be bought by Simon Mizrani and absorbed into his company soon after. In 1999, secretive members of the Mizrani board actually sent scientists to Site B to complete nearly finished work that Engine had done on various different animals. Creatures like the Ankylosaurus and Corythosaurus were being made by InGen just before the incident of 1993, and a hunter can even be seen holding a dinosaur guide for the Corythosaur during the expedition in the Lost World. One animal that hadn't been planned for Jurassic Park was the Spinosaurus. This dinosaur was created after John Hammond's death, which subsequently explains why it wasn't on their list. 
The DPG also goes into information on something called the amalgam testing. Amalgam being the definition of a mixture or blend suggests that this may have been Dr. Wu's ruffled feathers gene splicing research. The doctor conducted experiments on these animals for nine months after birth before releasing them into the wild. Essentially, all of this information gives us a vast amount of new lore that is always directly linked to the Spinosaurus. This information is not within a simple fan theory, and it is in fact an actual piece of promoted Jurassic Park canon. The Spinosaurus was factually created in 1999 and deemed an accident by Dr. Wu. He experimented on this dinosaur as well as the Corythosaurs and Kylosaurs and curiously, Ceratosaurs for nine months after their births. The two herbivorous species DNA was nearly completed during the days of Jurassic Park, with both dinosaurs having over 90% of their genomes mapped. However, the Spinosaurus and Ceratosaurus were different. Couple this with the information that the animals underwent gene splicing and amalgam testing, basically proving that they contain different dinosaur DNA in their genetic code. You get the following result from all of this. The Spinosaurus revelation to being a hybridized dinosaur. Now I hope this cleared some things up for some of you who were unaware or maybe made this a little more easy to understand given the massive influx of information that we've been getting. I'm curious to know what you think will happen with the Spinosaurus next and if you think we'll ever get to see it in a future Jurassic World installment. It's making appearances in games and toys lately so if anything I'd say it's still a possibility. Now before I go I'd like to thank my game wardens as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank my park workers and engine hunters as well. James Webster, Zach Alcorn, and John Ehrman. It seriously means the world to me that you guys have chosen to support me this way, and I want you to know that I appreciate everything you do to help the channel grow. Now, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.